It's Sunday, June the 1st. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray. This is your Alabama WX weather briefing. And we got lots to talk about today. I don't know that we've ever had this many things to talk about. I mean, we've got uh, Saharan dust. We've got volcanic, well, not volcanic, but uh, Canadian wildfire smoke. We've got, uh, we got a possible tropical storm or hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico in about 10, 12 days. You know, that's kind of interesting. Uh, we got dry weather for the next few days. We've got extremely heavy rainfalls that fell across a good bit of central Alabama uh, during the month of May. And uh, today is the start of meteorological summer. So, you know, hey, let's get started. This is uh, not centered very well because I was just too lazy to create another, uh, another source here. Uh, as I create this video on Saturday evening about 10.15. Uh, but these are rainfall totals uh, through the month of May. Uh, and now we're pretty much done uh, as we're approaching uh, midnight here. I think the cutoff actually 1 a.m., but not going to be any more rain tonight uh, for your Sunday morning. Uh, but rainfall amounts pretty impressive. Uh, 12 inches around the Birmingham area uh, where it's the second wettest May uh, in the record books. Uh, you'd have to go back in the, <clears throat> the 2003 uh, May event uh, that saw those tremendous rainfalls in the northeastern side of Birmingham uh, and take those out. It pushed us up to about 17 inches of rain for that month. Uh, or we, this would probably be number one. Um, we've got these 14, 15 inch amounts here in west central Alabama. Tuscaloosa recorded their wettest May ever. So uh, it's been interesting for sure, but we're starting off quite nice this morning. A uh, tiny bit of smoke in the air. We'll talk about that in a second. Temperatures in the 50s over the northern third of the state, lower 60s over the middle part of Alabama, uh, with also lower 60s over the southern part of the state. As we uh, get into the uh, afternoon hours today, it's going to warm up quite nicely. Uh, lower 80s up north, uh, middle 80s across central Alabama uh, with some uh, upper 80s uh, limited to South Alabama. Now, this is cloudiness. We're going to see some cloudiness increasing as we go through the morning hours. Uh, it won't become totally cloudy, but we're already starting out with these hazy skies anyway, like you saw yesterday uh, across the state. The, the clouds will thin out some during the afternoon, though. We'll see more sunshine as we go through the overnight. We're looking at mostly fair skies, and then through Monday, it looks like sunny skies uh, for the most part. Uh, and as we get on through the week, uh, some clouds Wednesday night into Thursday, more showers and thunderstorms return uh, to the forecast. I wanted to show you, and I'm actually going to go um, to a southeast look here. Uh, this is the, uh, the smoke from the Canadian wildflowers, the fires this morning. Um, and I'll back up one uh, model run. But you can see it's a diffuse, um, a little bit less than yesterday. Uh, but it's there. We'll see that it's thinning out as we go through the day today, but it may wrap back around um, during the late afternoon. And it's just going to give us those milky, uh, hazy skies that we saw on Saturday. So that's going to continue. May thicken a bit on Monday. Uh, it looks like uh, perhaps those concentrations going up a bit. Uh, so we're not going to get rid of it uh, anytime soon. Uh, radars across the deep south today should look like this, according to the HRRR. Um, we're looking good uh, up through the noon hour. Maybe a few showers showing up by mid-afternoon. Uh, it doesn't look like any of those uh, get out of control. Probably don't see any thunderstorms developing. Uh, but a few showers are possible there in that 3 to 7 p.m. time period. Uh, across Alabama, it's sort of a disturbance. Uh, passes to our north. Looks like we get through the evening hours, though, uh, without any more precipitation model fans. This is the GFS, and it's an interesting run. It's 18Z. I've uh, got a trough in the eastern United States ridge in the west as uh, we go through time. Uh, we've got a disturbance there in the southwestern United States, another one off the Pacific coast, uh, locking into the Four Corners region. That ridge shifts east and uh, builds along the Atlantic coast back into Alabama. And um, we see some uh, nervous activity there in the uh, Gulf uh, by uh, the end of the week, end of the weekend. But that's still a ridge of, tech, uh, a ridge of high pressure over Texas, uh, over into Alabama. Another disturbance 
Uh, they're moving through the Midwest, meandering slowly, but we see the disturbance of concern. It's moving up through the Western Caribbean uh, by early in the week two period. And folks, there's a reason we call it the uh, voodoo period, because that's a long way out. And as our friend Mark Suttis said on Hurricane Track uh, a couple of days ago, you have about as much of a chance of uh, hitting an, a 94-foot bank shot as you do calling uh, the potential of a hurricane landfall at this point. But that disturbance that's uh, out there potentially causing uh, some unsettled weather into the week could play a factor if, in fact, we do see a storm develop. And, you know, the model runs have been pretty consistent on the GFS that we're going to see something. But uh, if this were the case, uh, it appears that we might uh, have a significant tropical cyclone uh, somewhere along the middle Gulf Coast. But the last few runs, you know, this thing has been all over the place. You know, let's take a look. Um, 10 meter winds, uh, and I'll back up uh, one right there. You know, 110 mile per hour, uh, you know, hurricane would be nothing to sneeze at off the mouth of the Mississippi River, uh, certainly. Uh, but, you know, that's not a forecast. Go back, you know, one model run. And uh, we've got a system off the west coast of Florida. And that's been fairly consistent. Um, and passing uh, west of Tampa, uh, there into the Florida Big Bend area. They don't need it, of course. Uh, but a storm in that region would not be quite as strong. That's a minimal uh, hurricane, perhaps a strong tropical storm, uh, bringing some heavy rains uh, to uh, northeastern Georgia, the Georgia Mountains, uh, upstate South Carolina, western North Carolina, and eastern Tennessee. So we'll watch that. Uh, very carefully. That's going back to the 12Z run and going back to the 06Z run. Uh, we see that same uh, that same indication of a, a minimal hurricane, uh, very believable, off the west coast of Florida. But again, that's still that 94 bank that 94 foot bank shot uh, at this point. Let's go through the uh, day by days here uh, using uh, the GFS. Uh, this is today. Uh, we've got showers and thunderstorms to our north. There is uh, going to be a chance of severe weather uh, areas to our north and northeast, but not here in Alabama. As you saw, we shouldn't see anything but maybe a few rogue showers this afternoon. We go through the nighttime hours, and it's um, mostly fair and calm. Uh, it should be a beautiful night with overnight lows uh, generally in the upper 50s up north, lower 60s uh, over central uh, and southern sections of Alabama. High pressure is in charge on Monday, though, and the sunshine uh, really returns, and things begin to warm up. We'll be uh, into the upper, you know, middle and upper 80s tomorrow, and that's where we're going to kind of stay. You see that high pressure is in charge. Maybe a shower or two up along the uh, Tennessee border there, um, if you believe the GFS, and we'll kind of watch that. Of course, we're going to be still very warm, very humid. Uh, as we get into Tuesday, there's that system moving into the Midwest. Showers and thunderstorms that the day before will have been in the Dakotas will be shifting into the Midwest and the Southern Plains. We'll look at a, a severe weather risk that will be there for places like uh, eastern Oklahoma, uh, perhaps into Missouri, and uh, perhaps into Iowa and Illinois uh, on Monday. Uh, flooding threat also. You see lots of widespread heavy rain. But here in Alabama, uh, we're getting through Tuesday. It's dry. Looks like Wednesday is dry. The subtropical ridge is protecting us uh, there to the uh, east of the United States coast. And, um, and it looks like we get through Wednesday, perhaps even Thursday, before a few showers uh, start to show up. You know, So can't rule out a few showers showing up late in the day on Thursday. Um, certainly over western sections. Friday, I think the ridge breaks down enough that we see more widespread showers and thunderstorms beginning to develop. And uh, those chances will continue to increase as we go into the weekend. Now, by uh, Saturday night, you see we've got this system in the Western Caribbean on our radar, if it's there. And there's a good chance that it will be there. It's just where it goes from there. Uh, that we begin to watch. Uh, this is that 18Z run. Uh, moving forward, um, well, I'm sorry, this is the latest run, um, you know, showing uh, those, you know, fairly widespread showers and thunderstorms into that following week. And if that trough is right there, that's a problem. Um, we'll be watching that. You see it moves into the southern gulf. The waters are warm. Um, you know, it, it could be a problem. Uh, but, you know, I'd put the chance of that happening really at about, you know, you know, zero to five percent at this point. But we'll be watching. If that does happen, it'll be, of course, cloudy, rainy, stormy, uh, other 
things that come along with tropical cyclones. Uh, landfalling in the southern United States uh, would be on the table, but uh, we'll worry about that uh, when we get to it. Now, rainfall totals off the GFS, if the tropical storm does materialize and comes to the central Gulf Coast, of course, we're going to see more heavy rainfall amounts. Go back one run, though, and you see, uh, you know, fairly decent amounts over the next two weeks. Those, those are not bad amounts. I mean, we take that in the summer. So we're continuing into a fairly wet pattern. Uh, certainly not, uh, you know, reinstituting the drought. Northern half of Alabama, go back one more run uh, to last night's uh, midnight run. Um, and you see, um, you know, basically lighter amounts over south Alabama. Those heavier amounts are shunted to the east uh, with any potential tropical cyclone. This is uh, the day two outlook for severe weather with marginal risk over eastern Tennessee, uh, parts of North Carolina, uh, and upstate South Carolina. That's what you should see when the new day one comes out uh, in less than two hours. Um, and we'll have that on the blog for you first thing in the morning. This is uh, the day three, which tonight is, is your Monday outlook, uh, showing Nebraska, maybe a tiny smidge of northeastern Colorado uh, through southeastern uh, South Dakota into Minnesota with a slight risk. And um, then as we um, get into day four, that looks like the most significant uh, potential outbreak day. Um, from North Texas, uh, there in the Dallas area, through the Red River, into uh, eastern Oklahoma, southeastern Kansas, there around Wichita, uh, through much of central Missouri, southeastern Iowa, northwestern Illinois, into southern Wisconsin. We'll be watching uh, to see uh, how that all transitions. Now, temperatures off the uh, National Blend of Models. Looks like uh, today's the coolest day. Uh, we settle into a fairly summer-like pattern. Humidity levels rise, and you can see when that happens, we start seeing that, uh, that age-old summer pattern in Alabama, overnight lows uh, near 70 degrees. Now, I'm going to just um, you know flip it over to the GFS deterministic, and if this run is right, this 18Z run, of course, temperatures would be much cooler Thursday the 12th and Friday the 13th. Hey, that's another thing for our video, Friday the 13th. So, hmm, uh, things that make you go, hmm. Well, that's your weather video for this Sunday, June 1st. Welcome to June. And I uh, have notes on the blog, complete update on the forecast coming up for you at noon today. Uh, just in case anything changes, we'll begin keeping our eyes on the tropics for you very closely. This is the start of hurricane season. That's another thing that we've got to talk about. Um, uh, or another thing that I probably should have raised, and I'll raise it now. This is the beginning of tropical of uh, hurricane season in the North Atlantic. And um, my hurricane is out there this year, William. Uh, and given some of the forecasts, we might get there. But um, Check out, uh, check out all the notes on the blog. James will be back tomorrow with two days. Scott will be here next Saturday. I'll see you next Sunday. And until I get that chance, as I always tell you, keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at.